this was a big thing that came out, I guess, in 2021, 2022, and most of them have failed. We don't talk so much about the things that are actually being built on the blockchain, but that's changing today. Today we're talking about a very specific new gaming project out there called Mars 4. Will, what do you want to tell us about it? Hey Simon, glad to be here. Mars 4 is a game that has recently had some really cool developments. It's actually been out since late 2021, at least the token itself. But since the token was launched, a lot of development has been going on with Mars 4. And it's finally at a stage where it's mature enough that we can have a really good conversation about it. What Mars 4 is, is it's a combination of uh, NFTs, a Command and Conquer style type game, and a 3D exploration game, which was out fairly recently. And coming out soon is a multiplayer game. So in a nutshell, it's a game set on the planet Mars where you can mine and own land and do all of these other kinds of cool things. But at its core, it's based on NFTs, meaning that the players are NFTs themselves, uh, plots on land are NFTs, and a whole bunch of other different things about it. So it's an interesting application of NFTs beyond the standard board apes uh, picture kind of thing. Now it's three-dimensional and it's in a game. Absolutely. Now, I think it's, we've talked about this a lot about NFTs needing to be more than just a profile picture. It's taking some elements of digital ownership to the individual. And I hope that we can get to a point where games like this, we stop talking about this being NFTs because NFTs is just a funky name in blockchain where it's just, you know, it, it becomes just a digital asset that you own in game. So this is trying to build on that. You know, there's lots of things you can buy. You can buy land, you can buy good colonists, you can buy vehicles, and all these things are designed to help you do better in the game. And so there's a lot of, you know, economics behind it where they're trying to incentivize people to participate in the game, earn rewards in the game and all that kind of stuff. And I guess later on, we'll talk about how all that money spins around into the system and how that actually all works. But we'll tell us, you know, what's the benefits of the game? Why would you want to use this? As a player, really, the only reason I should want to use this game is because it's fun and anything that comes out beyond that should be an extra bonus. I think one problem that a lot of games today, especially in the blockchain have, is that you get a lot of people coming out and playing these things, but they're not really out there for the fun or enjoyment of it. They're there because, like you mentioned, it's an NFT. Really, it should just be ownership. An NFT is a representation of some form of, right now, just digital ownership. Really, the reason to play the Mars 4 game should be fun. But on top of that, it's, I think, an interesting kind of fun because, well, now we have a bit of a money aspect into it in that now there's NFTs in there. And that means that you can kind of strategize on how you want to do this. One of the things you can do, for example, is own uh, bits of land. And uh, not all land is the same on Mars. Uh, some pieces of land are rare, some are super rare, some are pretty common. It's up to you to develop it. And so I, th I still think the primary purpose of playing this game should be a lot of fun, but it's also possible that you can kind of, uh, I suppose, strategy on how you might be able to maximize your earnings if you're an NFT collector who also loves games. I think that's kind of like a nice mix for people who love NFTs and who love to game. They would benefit the most from this game. Yeah, so that's really interesting, I guess, for people who want to get involved in the actual gameplay of it. And I guess, you know, we're not exactly reviewing games per se, but it's important to understand how it works in order to understand its value proposition. But I guess the challenge that I have with games like this is simply that it, it appears to me to be something that is pushing that you can make money from this game. It's even calling itself a play to earn game. And mm. this was a big thing that came out, I guess, in 2021, 2022, and most of them have failed. So it will be interesting to see how and if Mars 4 can actually be seen as a game and not a play to earn game kind of thing. What are your thoughts on that? That's a good point, Simon. The whole play to earn aspect is, uh, I think to agree with you, it's, it's kind of been a gimmick. The game, it's been a gimmick in terms of attracting people and then inflating a token essentially without really having a proper economic sync. Any economy you set up really has to have a sync and people should not be going there because they want to earn tokens. Because if, if you set it up like that, it's kind of setting up 
putting the cart before the horse, like, oh, earn this while playing a game. No, it should be about playing a game and then earn this by chance. A really good game that's been around for a long time that is a great example of how a game should be where there's uh, economics in there as well is Second Life. Second Life has been around for decades and it has linden dollars. This was way before blockchain. It had a digital currency. There's no NFTs or anything in there, but it, it is a game with an economy that works because it's fun. Uh, people want to go there and, and, and farm and do all this kind of thing. So I'm not a big fan of the whole play to earn thing either. I think really the the proof should be this game is great. Otherwise, anybody can just spin up anything and inflate tokens to infinity and call it a play to earn. The problem is that, well, eventually it generates a big spike out of the uh, DGENs out there. They go in, they inflate the token, they earn the token, they sell it. At some point, uh, it's not even worth playing anymore because the inflation has uh, hit the economy so hard that whatever the game, uh, I suppose, spins out in terms of currency isn't really worth it anymore. And then you can really tell what the game was worth in that, well, how many players are still playing it? So I guess we have to see what comes out of Mars 4. It's got a pretty uh, decent Twitter and Discord following, some of the tune of 50,000 users on Discord. Now, the question is whether those uh, Discord users are gamers themselves or if they're just DJs out there looking for <laughs> a token, I guess. That's a, a big question that I am yet to see resolved with this, is that is this DGENs trying to figure out a way to make some money or flip some NFTs? Or mm -hmm. is there actual general interest from gamers in the space? I think from my perspective so far, I've seen more DGENs in play mm -hmm. here. It's, it hasn't mm -hmm. got, I guess, the gameplay hype and ease of entry like something like Alluvium has out there. So I feel this game is definitely lending its more self to, I guess, game theory as far as how much money you can make from it rather than this is an engrossing game that I can't stop playing. And for me, the big thing that I wanted to see in the future was those games where it was, oh my God, this is so much fun to play. Oh, I didn't even know it was blockchain. This one is very much so you will earn money, you will own NFTs, you will own land, and there's some mm. games you can play with it. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I, I have to agree with you. I, I still, I'm still really excited in NFTs being used in gaming because it is... I suppose a different exploration because I mean NFTs right now have just been images and we're talking about this last week and Bored Apes I think has a market cap of half a billion dollars and right now you can't really do anything with those Bored Apes you can literally just hold them and speculate on them when I see projects like this coming out I go yeah it's I mean it's it could be another gimmick um but at the same time, I, I really, I really want to see them being fun. I want to see something fun, and that is, where it's not an NFT that is a game. It's actually a game that has NFTs. And I'm not sure exactly where to stand on this, but I have to agree with you in that if they're marketing first to the crypto community, then they're really not marketing a game. I mean, if they're marketing to the gaming community, and if you go to the Discord and it's not people asking when token, when next NFT drop, it's just like, mm -hmm. hey, when am I getting this character next? Or uh, when are we getting this expansion? Then that's a game. And and I guess I think I have to agree with you, Simon, in that I think the blockchain world is still waiting on, on a game that is a game <laughs> and not an NFT with a game attached on top of it. <laughs> I, I will say as a positive for this is that it is a step up in, I guess, the visual graphics. You know, it, it does appear to have some really good 3D graphics. So it is, I guess, building the gameplay and the game space around it being a full 3D immersive environment, which I guess you expect from you know, modern games these days. So the experience is kind of there. And they're trying to put the gameplay into it. And I understand, you know, I love the strategy games. I love the concept of you know, building and collecting resources and all those kind of things. Those are the games that I grew up living and breathing. So mm. I totally get that. They're trying to get there. So maybe it will be. Maybe we're being just, maybe I'm being too skeptical about it. I want a game to be awesome and I really want this to do it. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's something that you mentioned last time. We we're talking about Sega. And I think something that you had said then was that 
a lot of the games in the blockchain are not made by gaming companies. It's just people trying different things and trying to be innovative. And uh, so like, if you look at the founders, they don't really have a history in making a lot of games. It's just a group of entrepreneurs and good for them. But hopefully, uh, if other gaming companies can start to smell the money and see, wow, look at these guys, they're pretty much nobodies. And I don't know, maybe they've made a million dollars this month in actual revenue. Well, if the likes of Sega and PlayStation start to see this, I think they might be enticed to see, uh, to give it a go. And I guess in relation to Mars, uh, one of the things we can do in this game is terraforming. So I guess one way we can think of uh, games like similar to this that are being made by blockchain people is that they they're kind of terraforming the space for actual game companies and generally uh, in a planet like mars if you want to terraform you don't want to start with a, a really complex organism you want to start with something that's really simple and really hardy like a microorganism so maybe this game and similar forays into the nft gaming space are this kind of microorganism and all they're doing is they're terraforming getting people used to the idea of nfts in the game they're trying different things and if they can get some form of success ah next couple of years i think most uh, mobile games a lot of mobile apps and probably like even console games will probably have nfts uh, as as part of their offering yeah and the other thing to think about when it comes to games that talk about scarcity and they're talking about scarcity in this because there's a limited amount of nfts for land because mars that they've created is a limited amount of space but you've got to trust them for that because if the game's really success, successful they're making lots of money what's we'll <laughs> stop from saying oh now venus is available and we can start selling <laughs> land plots on venus so you're taking some level of trust there that they will actually maintain that scarcity but people are in this space to also make money. So if you're a game developer and this game actually really does really take off well, are they mm. going to say, oh, we're done. We're just going to maintain that value for everyone else or do they need an expansion which will dilute the NFT value but allow more people in, which then could, they could argue, could then increase the value for everyone else because more money is flowing in. I don't know. But it's the concept of the land in the metaverse in general is that land is infinite in the metaverse and there's not mm. huge amounts of value per se especially in a metaverse in a game it's a bit different because they can add extra elements to it but that's just a concern for me when it comes to games like this mm. that that is very tempting and I, that's actually something i hadn't thought about uh, with a cryptocurrency you can actually look at the smart contract and see well it's guaranteed not to mean uh, meant anything more but with NFTs, I don't think I've seen a contract that guarantees, mm -hmm. well, there's only going to be uh, 500 in this collectible set. What's to stop, let's say, Bored Apes from doing Bored Apes 2 or Bored Apes zombie version or Halloween version or whatever? Uh, it's it's a good point. And that could be a space that uh, needs to be explored. Uh, NFTs that have limited amounts of mints. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, let's move on a bit, mate. Let's talk about what are some of the challenges or the risks of Mars 4? What do you see as issues that could be of concern? Well, it's an NFT game. And one problem out there, of course, is gas fees. In a lot of projects, we always talk about smart contract risk. But really, in terms of a game, there's not, not, uh, not a massive honeypot for uh, where tokens are being stored. Everyone has their own address. So that's kind of nice. But then the problem is that if it's based on NFTs, biggest problem with NFTs is minting. And I mean, if, if minting is going to cost you $100 to get a $2 worth item, that, that obviously becomes a problem. And there's also issues, I think, with the inconsistencies between what the game says that they're doing. This, they, they actually say that this is the planet Mars and we've gotten the data from uh, NASA and other organizations. But I think space geeks are going uh have you though <laughs> so there's a little bit of uh controversy there and i guess it it could affect the value of the nft and uh, i think some of the bits of land also selling at exorbitant rates 0 0.1 if it's a little bit high for a lot of gaming items so it's really a lot about costs and how uh the gaming dynamics try to work with NFTs, but generally not a massive risk. Really, it's in the user experience, the UX of a game. And this is really a problem that the entire blockchain has across the board. 
And it's kind of nice to see these kinds of guys trying to tackle this problem. Yeah, they're financially motivated, but if they can tackle these problems, I think the gaming space will be better in terms of uh, NFTs. Yeah, I tend to agree with you there about the, the risks involved. The smart contract risks are kind of fairly negligible in this. The thing I will say about the cost of entry for this game, as you mm. said, like the land sale is currently now on and it's 0.1 ETH. So about 200, what, 200, exactly 200 US dollars as of today, isn't it really, per lot of land. And that's just to kind of get access to some of the land. That's not including you need other people like colonists, which cost more money and vehicles to do more mining. Those things are additional costs that you can either spend time in the game and collect resources to purchase those, or you can you know, use more money. And $200 just to enter into a game is a lot of money. The biggest AAA rating games that are going out at the moment, the PCs for Xboxes, for Playstations, they don't cost that much mm. money. So that to me is a big challenge for this game, is that who is going to pay $200 for a game that doesn't actually exist yet? doesn't have a track record of any kind of massive gaming company out there. It's a huge, huge wall in the, in the face of it. I mean, the big thing they're pushing back to you and trying to tell you the value add of doing this is that you can earn a passive income from earning this land. Yeah. <laughs> and that to me was something that obviously as an investor, I sit there and tweaking, okay, that's really interesting. How, how do I earn passive income from owning land in this NFT gameplay. And they do speak about how it happens. And a lot of it comes from fees that are generated through in-game sales. So mm. land sales, vehicle sales, the people sales, all these kind of trading that goes around between people within the game, they'll clip a fee and then that goes back to land holders. Mm. So that's an element of a passive income, but that right there requires new users, new people to come on. So in essence, the current economics of the system is a Ponzi scheme. It requires new people coming into the space to purchase more land, to purchase more vehicles, to then give money back to the current landholders. They have also talked about sponsorships and revenue raised through sponsorships has been going into it, which is great, which is what you want to see because that is real world revenue coming into the space rather than just new user Ponzi economics. But they haven't got that yet. They don't have a game, so mm. that doesn't exist yet. And the mm. biggest failure in mind of a play to earn that tried to do that was Steppen, which always talked about getting ad revenue and had never really quite figured out how to do it. And that had millions and millions of users and they couldn't figure it out. So there is no mm. current revenue scheme other than new users, which currently makes it a game with Ponzi scheme economics. What are your thoughts? I've got to agree with you, Simon. The game offers any investor two ways to invest into it. One of them is with the Mars 4 token, which I guess users need to purchase all of these kinds of things. And then the other one is investing in the land. Now, conceptually, that's an amazing idea in that if Sony came out and let's say they wanted to release, I don't know, Call of Duty 20 or whatever Call of Duty we're up to. And this time it's set in World War II and there's heaps of land in Europe that you can buy. That would be really tempting because I already know this game is a huge history. I can look at the history and look at the revenues, how many users they have, uh, uh, in-game items. I can look at all of that and I can also see the growth trajectory and go, wow. I actually want to pick up this uh, Call of Duty NFT or Call of Duty currency because I can tell that there is already an economy uh, or there's going to be a massive economy. The problem with Mars 4, as you said, is that it kind of has a few of the pieces set up nice uh, in that you can buy land and in a sense, you're almost like a prospector or an investor. The problem is that, well, what is the size of the economy going on in these lands? Uh, right now, it doesn't seem to be that big. And it might be because that they set the, the went about creating the game uh, and it, on, in an NFT first uh, sort of model where, yeah, just get these NFTs and then we'll figure out the game later. It should have been, let's make a great game and let's figure out the NFTs later. So in terms of investment, great idea, probably not well executed. And it would, this one would be a pass for me. <laughs> I, think 
I think it's pretty obvious it's a pass from me as far as investment. But what I guess it does make me bullish on is that we are still building. The space is still building. It's still trying to figure out how to make blockchain and gaming work. In my opinion, this one's not going to hit the mark still, but people are trying. So that to me means I'm bullish on blockchain in general. It's I'm bullish on the space because sooner or later, probably sooner, someone is going to hit the mark right and they are going to create that killer game that everyone starts playing and they don't realize it's blockchain. That's when I've, I want to be owning the underlying asset, the Ethereum or whatever, the Solana, whatever blockchain it's on. That's when I want to be holding that, I think, is an investment opportunity. I've got to agree with you there in that uh, in the last couple of years, the blockchain investment opportunities have been looking at the infrastructure, the blockchains that are to be built, the layer tools to make them faster. All of these kinds of protocols had to be set up, but well, those things are nearing maturity. And now what's happening is that user facing applications are getting there, games, uh, sports apps and, and everything. And what we're seeing now is that initial foray, like Step In and all of these others and these games, that's just the initial foray. And at some point, these games are going to have figured out a way to capture this kind of economy and it's going to open up some some really new cool things to invest in which is i guess why this is a really cool project to look into so that we can kind of gauge the maturity of the space right now and i feel like when it happens it's going to be really quick and really sudden we're going to see a game or a family of games that suddenly takes off and puts a really cool use case into nfts Absolutely, mate. Well, let's leave it there for the day. If you've made it this far, please give us a like, give us a subscribe, give us a comment, all those things that you can do to help us get the word out there more. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Simon. See you next time.